Hello and welcome to the series on Microsoft Power Apps. In this video, we'll be uh, following up on the previous video that we did and looking at creating our team using Microsoft Teams and uh, setting up our SharePoint online site. So um, if we head over to office.com, um, you can see on the left-hand side here, we can navigate all the way down to Teams. And this will open up Microsoft Teams. If you have the desktop application installed, it will be the same process. I'm just using it in the browser because this is my development PC and I have a, a number of different uh, tenants that I'm, I'm playing around with. So I just want to use the, the browser for now. So if we head over to Teams, you can see uh, at the bottom over here, you have the option to, to join or create a team. And over here, we have the option to create a team. So I want to create a new team. And you have the option to create it from a group or create it from scratch. I'm going to create mine from scratch and it's going to be a, a, a private team. And I'm going to give it the name of employee team. You obviously can give it any name you want. Uh, I'll call mine employee team and let's create that. Great, uh, so now um, the team has been created and I can add my members, whoever I want to give access. I don't really want to give anyone access for now, so I'll just skip that. And uh, if you click on the general tab, you can see there's an option to go to files. So under files, you'll have an option to open in SharePoint. And this will open up another tab. So this is the SharePoint site that we're going to, going to be using. Just for information, if you head over to um, your admin portal uh, or admin center and you click on show all and you go down to SharePoint, it will take you to the SharePoint admin center. If we click on sites and you can see active sites, um, we will have uh, the test, the communica uh, communication site and the employee team site that I, that I just created. I could easily create a SharePoint online team site but I specifically didn't want to do that because when you're creating a team in Microsoft Teams, it does a number of things. It creates a shared mailbox, it creates a, a, your, your team, it creates a SharePoint site, and it creates the shared storage. So um, the idea for my application is I'd like to create a channel and I'll add the, the, the application to the channel. And I will also have my SharePoint site that will be used as my data source. So that is the reason why I've done it. There's a number of different ways that you could do this. Like I said, you could, could create it directly in SharePoint, but if you create it directly in SharePoint, you wouldn't have the team site behind it. So that is the reason I've done it. Um, the list that I'm going to create will be an employee list and it will have the employee name, the employee surname, their department, their position, an image of the employee if there is one, and uh, their email address. So obviously I could have done this with Excel, uh, I could have done this with uh, uh, Google Docs or, or any, any other uh, application, but I specifically wanted to do it with uh, SharePoint Online because I think if you're using all of the technologies uh, provided by Microsoft, so for example, in this case, SharePoint Online, Microsoft Teams, and Power Apps, and maybe even Power Automate, you can create uh, some robust uh, applications and they're pretty easy and quick to, to create. Good, so I've, I've navigated to my SharePoint site just to show you uh, if you go to your general tab, you go to files, you'll see there's under files, there's an option to navigate to SharePoint. Uh, you can also see the URL of the, um, of the uh, team site in your uh, admin center, and that would be sites employee team. So let's just go to the employee site. Uh, under documents, I want to create a, a new folder And I will call this employees. So that will be the document where I'll store all the employee information. If we if we go to the, the document, I can upload uh, all of the documents that I have. So I'll drag and drop those images and I'll save it to the employees folder under documents. 
we'll come back to this a minute in a minute and we'll show you how you can upload or associate these with the different users if you click on the cogwheel and go to site uh, contents you can see currently we don't have a lot of content under our site we've got our documents uh, site assets style libraries and site pages so what i want to do is i want to click on uh, a new app and what we're going to do is create a custom list so think of a custom list uh, let's just give it a name first So think as a of a custom list as just a, a list, so similar to what you would have in Excel. And this list will have different columns, and these columns will be for the employee's name, for the employee's surname, for the employee's department, and the position, and uh, a list, uh, a column for the image, and a column for the email. So let's click on employees. If you know information, and if we click on the cogwheel, and we go to uh, list settings and if we scroll down over here you can see the current columns i want to create a new column well we already have a column for title so let's rename that and i will call that name click on ok uh, let's click on create a column let's call that surname and we want that to be a single line of text. Click on OK. Create a new column. And this will be, uh, let's make this one email. And this will also be a single line of text. You could set these columns up as personal group, but I don't have all of these users set on an active directory. So I will just set them up manually and populate them manually. Let's click on OK. Let's select Create Column. And this one will be for Department. And this one will be for a Choice Field. And you can see at the bottom here, uh, we have the different op options for Choice. So I'll put in the HR. I'll put in Sales. I'll put in there marketing and I'll put in there IT. So currently those are the four uh, departments that we're gonna have within this, uh, this list uh, and they're gonna be as a drop down. So the first choice is gonna be HR and uh, you can select any one you want. Let's actually, um, yeah, let's leave it like that and click on okay. And let's click on create column and this column will be called um, position. And this will also be a, a single line of text. And then the last one will be image. And this will be a link to a, a picture or a uh, a link to the pictures that we uploaded to our document library. So if we click on OK, and we go back to the employees list, you can see uh, we've created a list. Uh, if we click on new employee, and you can see over here, we have uh, the employee name, we have the employee surname, we have the employee email address, uh, we have the department that you can select. So HR, sales, marketing, IT. Uh, you have the position you can enter as text, and you can enter a URL uh, for uh, the employee, uh, the image of the employee. Let's just cancel that. So I will update all of this quickly. Okay, so you can see on SharePoint here, I've now populated all of the data. We've got about 50 names. So we've got the name of the employee. We've got the surname of the employee. We've got the email of the employee. We've got the department. So these departments are drop-down lists. So we've got HR, IT, um, marketing, and sales. And then we also have the position of the person. And then we have the image, which is coming from our documents and general employees folder. So all of that information of the, 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 the images of all the employees are set over here. 
So if we go back to our um, employees list, let's just scroll back. Um, you could add any information you want here. This is just fictitious information, but the idea is to create a data set and to use SharePoint as our data set. Um, a number of things to mention about SharePoint. Uh, the reason I'd want to use it as a data set is because you, you've got an option to, to add Power Automate. Uh, you also got uh, versioning enabled. If we go into our list settings, um, you can see over here we've got versioning. Currently, uh, it's not enabled, but you can enable it to have different versions enabled. So every time someone makes a change, you can track that change. Um, you can also set unique permissions on your list. So if you if you're looking at your list here, uh, let's let's just refresh that so it displays our information. So you could set up unique permissions on your list. So you could create different groups. Currently, we only have member one member on the site, but we could create different groups that where different people could contribute, and different people would be able to edit information. So you have a lot of flexibility with SharePoint, and uh, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to use it. If we go to our um, Teams and you look at your employee employee site. Uh, if we click on general, click on files, and you can also see even though we uploaded it to Teams, it's uh, also uh, you, it's also visible on your uh, team site. Um, so if we click on there, you can see here's a list of all of the employees that we added to, or added to our images of the employees that we added to our site. Um, let's just go back to site content and go to documents. If we added this folder outside of the general tab, so if we added it in the root, it would not be visible in Teams. So uh, this corresponds, this folder over here, general, corresponds to our um, channel over here for general. But like I said, you could create any any data set that you want. You, you, you don't have to add images and you could create a different uh, um, list to use. So just think of this list as an Excel sheet or a database table. And we will be using this uh, in our application, which we will be doing in the next video.